Hi everyone and welcome back to Timigate. In today's video, we are going to be talking about VRRP. VRRP stands for Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol and is a powerful protocol that ensures seamless failover and high availability, which are crucial for maintaining uninterrupted connectivity in your network. So in this tutorial, I'll walk you through the step-by-step -step process of configuring VRRP on Microtik routers, from setting up the virtual IP address to designating the master and backup routers, we will have it all covered right here in this video. By the end of this video, you will have a solid understanding of how to implement VRRP on your Microtik devices. Don't forget to hit the like button if you find this video helpful. Subscribe to my channel for more networking tips and ring the notification bell to stay updated on my latest tutorials so let's jump into it so the topology i have on my screen is quite simple i'm not going to spend so much time explaining it i have two internet links connecting to m2 and m3 behind the routers is where the magic is going to happen i have this lan network i'm going to configure this interface for physical ip address 10.1 and this is going to have physical IP 10.2 and then there will be a virtual IP address 10.3 which will be assigned to both the virtual interface here, the VRRP interface here and the VRRP interface here. The LAN devices, which in this case I only have one, will be given IPs from the same subnet. The device here is going to be addressed with 192.168.10.4 and its gateway is going to be 10.3. So we'll test it out by shutting down this router and see how long it takes for the failover to occur through this router. After that, we are also gonna shut down this link, leaving this router up and see what happens. So to allow us test, I'm going to configure a loopback IP here, and that IP is gonna be 8.8.8.8, .8 and that's the IP we'll be testing to. So, let's jump into the proper configuration check the ip i have two ips here one on ether one one on ether two ether one connects to m2 ether two connects to m3 now it's time to create the loopback interface and assign the 8.8.8.8 .8 ip to it So I have created the loopback interface and I have also assigned an IP address to it on router M1. So now I'll head over to router 2 and router 3 for their own configurations. So I have this uh, cloud appliance here connected just to give me GUI access to these devices. So I'm going to log into M2 via Winbox. On the M2 router, I need to configure NAT. The reason I'm going to configure NAT is that on the M1 router, there's no route statement to get to this network, the 10.0 network. So without NAT, it is not going to work. The easiest way to do this is to have NAT configured such that M2 and M3 will have this 10.0 uh, network NATed to the IP they have on the outgoing interface. So once that is done, router M1 should be able to respond to whatever ICMP request that is being sent from the LAN. So let's jump back into M2. So here on M2, I'll go to IP firewall NAT. The chain is source NAT. Outgoing interface is a one action. Mask rate. Apply and OK. So now that that's done, I'll go to interface, click on VRRP, click on add. 
in the general tab i can choose any name for my vrrp instance but i'm going to leave it at vrp1 i'll click on vrp choose an interface for it in this case eta2 which is the interface leading to the lan set an id for it i'm using 10 you can use any number but make sure it is the same on both routers the interval i'm going to leave it to one second i'll click on apply and i'll click on ok then the next thing is to assign an ip address to the vrrp interface click on ip click on i address add then i'll set the vrrp gateway ip here 192.168.10.3 remember i said that this is the ip i'm going to use this ip must be the same on both vrrp interfaces on both routers so i'll choose the vrrp interface and okay it within a second it will go black it's going to come up and then this will change from red to black so now you see it's been done so the final thing i need to do here is to configure a route statement on this router to reach the 8.8.8 uh, ip so i'll click on ip and i'll click on route then i'll add the gateway should be 192.168.1.1 apply and okay okay just for perspective what i did here is to put a route statement on m2 to reach the loopback ip here and i'll say that the gateway for that is this interface the ip configured here which is 1.1 so now let's head over to router 3 and get it set up so here on router 3 i need to configure nuts the chain is source map the out interface is at one and the action is masquerade After that, I need to go to interfaces, go to VRP, and, and create a VRP interface. Leave it at VRP1. If I want to, I can change it to any name. It doesn't matter. Go to VRP tab, choose an interface, in this case, ETA2, and then set my ID to be the same with what I set on the other router. I'm going to increase my priority to a number higher than 100 because I want this router to be the active VRP router or active VRP gateway. So I'll leave the uh, intervals to one second, the same thing there that I set for, I set on router two. I'm going to check preemption here because I want this router to be the active uh, VRP router upon recovery. Whenever it fails and recovers, it should be able to take control back from router 2 and i'll apply and i'll okay it then i need to come over here and assign an ip the same ip i assigned to the vrp interface on router 2 apply and okay just to be sure i'll go back to router 2 to confirm that i unchecked preemption on router 2. preemption is not needed on router 2. unfortunately i didn't so i'm going to uncheck it here i only need preemption on router 3. why because when router 3 which is going to be the active vrp router fails router 2 will take over the control of that ip router 2 starts responding to requests sent to 10.3 but in the event that router 3 recovers it should be able to say to router 2 hey give control back to me so now that i'm done setting up vrp on this router i need to put a route statement to reach network 8.8.8 uh to reach host 8.8.8.8 So this is done it's now time to go test it out on m4 here on m4 we are going to assign 
a default gateway okay you can see that there is no raw statement no default gateway configured so i'll put a default gateway 192.168.10.3 now it's not pointing to any of the physical ips okay it's going to point to the virtual gateway ip so what you're seeing here is that this interface here was configured with 10.2 10.1 sorry this interface was configured with 10.1 this interface was configured with 10.2 but the virtual interface ips on both router is 10.3 so based on what has been set up router 3 should be the active vrp router but in the event that it fails control will be handed over to router 2 so let's test it out so on router m4 we are going to run a ping to 8.8.8.8 .8 we see that it is replying the gateway configured is not the IP address on any of the router's physical interface. It is the virtual redundancy router gateway IP, which is 10.3. Because router 3 has a higher priority, it is assumed that router 3 is the active VRRP gateway. Let's confirm that. On router 3, I'm going to go to the VRRP interface, which is here. And I'll go to status. I see that it is up, it's not down. I'll go to traffic. And as you can see, I'm seeing traffic on this uh, interface. If I compare this to router two, if I do the same thing on router two, I should not see traffic on this interface. What I'm gonna do now is to shut down router three and see what happens. So router three is shut down. Let's go back to M4 and see what happens. So we had a few timeouts here and it came back up. So remember that the interval configured on the VRP interface was just, is just one second. So within that space of one second, we had a failover to the second router, which is the M2. So if we go back to M2 now and confirm, we should be seeing traffic. You can see we are seeing traffic on the M2 router because it is now the VRP, uh, a master we can re-enable router 3 now so if you look right here you see that we are back in router 3 router 3 is back up and from what we are seeing here is running and it's the master so router 3 has wrestled control back from router 2 because preemption was enabled on router 3 so let's go back to router 2 and check its own status at the moment. So we see that on router 2, router 2 has now gone from master to backup. So everything is working the way you would want it to be. But what do you think would happen if the link between router 3 and M1 goes down and router 3 is not done physically? let's find out so we go to the m1 router and try to shut down the interface connecting to router 3. so we can see that the interface connected to router 3 is this eta 2 interface so i'm just going to shut it down we can see that the packet is failing with timeout and there is no automatic failover happening here control is not being given to router 2 as a matter of fact router 3 here still remains as the master it's running and it's master but connectivity is failing we cannot get to the internet the reason why this is happening is because we did not enable connection tracking so let's get it enabled and solve this problem so in the VRRP uh, tab, simply click on connection tracking and click on sync connection tracking and put an 
internet ip an ip address that is reachable over the internet that you want to track to apply and okay it and the moment we did that you see that router 3 has gone from master to backup and we should be getting replies now everything is not working well as it should because control has been handed over to router 2. so guys this is how you implement vrrp on your microtik router remember that vrrp is an industry standard first hub redundancy protocol normally you would have uh hsrp or grpp on cisco routers in addition to vrrp but on non-cisco devices you have vrrp because it is the industry standard if you find this video interesting please do not forget to like share comment and also give us a subscription thank you for sticking to the end and see you in my next video